Alright, what's up everybody? I'm back again today with an awesome MCAT question of the day. Uh, and today, we're actually going to hit genetics. So if you're having some trouble with genetics, this is also a great video to watch genetics. So it says plant X has the following genotype. A, big A, small A, big B, little B, big C, small C. It is crossed with another plant that is big A, little A, big B, big B, big C, little C. What is the probability of getting a progeny from this mating that is big A, little A, big B, little B, big C, little C? You may assume that all genes are unlinked. So, before we even start and look at these numbers, which I'm sure scare someone uh, if you're just looking at the numbers, let me make sure we understand what unlinked means. Unlinked, even though it can mean a wide variety of things, to simplify it, I would encourage everyone to just assume that unlinked means that the genes are all on separate chromosomes. Okay, and so that would literally mean that, you know, gene A is on a separate chromosome from gene B, which is on a separate chromosome from gene C. More importantly than that, I also want to make sure I make this distinction clear. Like these three alleles, these three um, genotypes, I'm going to basically assume that they're here and that those are the genotypes of the father. Okay, just to make things easier. And from here on out, I'll draw father with the orange. And then uh, similarly, I'm going to assume that these three genotypes, right, these three at the upper right hand corner, are the genotypes of the mother. And so by the way, the genotype should be big B, big B, right? Because the mom is big B, big B. So that's the genotypes of the mother. Okay, and the genotypes of the mother, I will always be drawing in green. Now, assuming that these, these genes are on separate chromosomes, and I totally know that unlinked genes can be on the same chromosome, but it's just easier to assume that they are on separate chromosome. It makes the work much easier to understand. Assuming they are on a separate chromosome, the probability of getting an offspring that is big A, little, little A, big B, little B, and big C, little C, what is that? If these genes are on separate chromosomes, then this is basically the probability of getting a big A, little A, times the probability of getting a big B, little B, times the probability of getting a big C and a little C. Okay, so I want you to know that if genes are unlinked, then you can pretty much break down the probabilities like we did here into individual probabilities. And then you can do each of these crosses individually and multiply them together to get the final answer. Okay, and I also realized I forgot the S on the chromosomes, so here it is. They're on separate chromosomes. If genes are unlinked, you can assume that they're on separate chromosomes. Yes, they can be on the same chromosome uh, and just be really far apart. But that just makes things complicated, and I would encourage you to assume that they're on separate chromosomes. With that being said, let's now, let me show you what I mean by separate chromosomes. I have already drawn it out. So here's my papa bear, or papa plant in this case, uh, the genes I've drawn out. So I drew out that, you know, the allele A, big A, and little a, the gene A is basically on this chromosome that I've drawn. Gene B is on a separate chromosome, and gene C is on a separate chromosome. Similarly, gene A for mom is on the same chromosome, but it's a different chromosome set because it's mom. Gene B is on the same chromosome, you know. So if this was like chromosome 1, like the pair of chromosome 1s, then this is chromosome 1 for dad. If this was chromosome 2, then this is chromosome 2 for mom, and chromosome 3, and chromosome 3 for mom. The point is, those chromosomes are similar. And if they're all on similar chromosomes, they're all on separate chromosomes. You can just do all, each of these three crosses individually. And if we do these three crosses individually, we can then multiply the individual probabilities together to get the final answer. So now let's start by investigating. Let's investigate um, the big A, little a cross. So remember, it says that plant X has the following genotype. It has big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c. And we said that this plant X was basically the dad. Okay. And then we assume that this leftover stuff right here, big A, little a, big B, big B, big C, little c, that was the genotype of mom. So now remember, if we want to calculate the probability of getting a progeny that is big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c, then you want to first calculate the individual probabilities of getting this big A, little a. And to do that, let's just first do the Punnett square cross for big A, little a. All right. For big A, little a, remember that the dad, the dad, 
is big A little a, right? The dad's genotype I'm going to put right here. And the mom is also big A little a. So I'm going to put the mom's genotype up here. And then we just do a simple Punnett square. And we do the result, right? We What are we going to get? We basically multiply the two things together. And we see what is the probability of getting a big A little a. Because remember, we want our progeny to have a big A little a. And the probability of that, as you'll see, is 2 out of 4, or 1 half, right? Probability of big A little a is 1 half. So now we can actually know that probability of big A little a is 1 half. And so now let's go and move on to the next question. The question here now we're going to move on to is the cross between the B alleles, um, the B variants between the two parents. And remember the mom is big B little, big B, big B. And the dad is big B, little b. And now if we cross these two guys together into the Punnett square, you'll see that we get this resulting Punnett square. Right? And remember what we want? We want to investigate the probability of getting big B, little b, because that's what the question is asking. Where's the probability that the child, of, or the child plant of this, uh, of this fertilization will have big B, little b. And if we look at this, we have 1 and 2 out of 4, which again is 1 half, right? So that's going to be 1 half. Now let's do the same thing, last but not least, with the C alleles, right? We're going to do it with the C alleles. And remember, the, the dad is going to be big C, little c. And the mom is also going to be big C, little c. So I'm going to go over and show that that's mom, right? And we're going to cross these two bad boys together, big C, little c for mom, and big C, little c for dad. And we're going to get big C, big C, big C, little c, big C, little c, small c, small c. And now, remember, we want the progeny to have one big C and one little c. That's what we want the progeny to have. And you'll see that that's two out of four, or one half, again. Okay, so now let's put this all together. Let's put it all together. Remember, we want a progeny that has a big A little a, big B, big A little a, big B little b, big C little c. And we said that they're all in separate chromosomes, so we can multiply the independent probabilities together. And we remember that probability of getting a big A little a for mom and dad was one half. Probability of getting a big B little b was one half. And probability of getting a big C little c was also one half. And if we multiply all those together, we get one eighth. All right? Things would be a lot more complicated if we introduced this thing called linkage. But because the genes are unlinked, the answer here is going to be D. So the answer is D. Um, we learned a lot about, you know, segregation and independent assortment here. We assumed the genes were unlinked and we can separate everything out. It makes the problem easier to understand and gives us our answer, which is 1 8. All right, if you guys have any questions for me, let me know. Like, subscribe, share. Let me know if you have more questions. See you in the next video.